This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Truly, this is a day of joy, a day of happiness, as we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus that took place many years ago, but that resurrection that is still lived out in our own time. I'm reminded on this Easter of a little story of a a minister who one day on Easter Sunday called the children up for a little children's sermon. And he began the sermon by saying, um, what has long ears that kind of sticks out of their head? And one little boy put up his hand and he said, Jesus. <laughs> he says, no, he said, what has long ears, but also has a nose that kind of twitches a little bit? wiggles. The boy said, Jesus. No, no, you know, it's a little animal with a, with a little furry tail, long ears, and a nose that wiggles. The little boy said, Jesus. And he said, why do you keep saying Jesus? He says, because I know you didn't call us up here to talk about some stupid bunny rabbit. <laughs> We are not here today to speak about bunny rabbits. We're not here today to speak about all the superficial stuff about Easter. Because unfortunately, Easter for too many people is just a once a year observance. It is about the bunny rabbits and the Easter candle, candy and the, the new clothing and a nice meal. And that's all it is. But that's not the way it is for us. For we come to experience the very fact of the resurrection of the Lord, which is the high point of all human history, not just spiritual history, but it's the high point of human history because Jesus through his death and resurrection has raised us all up, has reconciled us to the Father, all of humanity, and given us a meaning and a purpose within our lives that speaks not just superficially, but at the very heart of who we are as believers in Christ Jesus. This Easter celebration invites us to go into the past as well as into the future, but most of all, to live in the present. We are invited to go with Mary Magdalene, with Peter and John, and to go to the tomb and to recognize that the tomb is empty, the body is not there. And those subsequent revelations, apparitions of Jesus to his disciples, when they physically touched him, still now alive with a human body, but one no longer subject to death, but rather glorified, transformed. That is the body of Christ today. We, are, we know that what we celebrate here today is not rooted just in some personal belief that we have or in some myth from the past. It's rooted in an historical fact of Jesus' resurrection and of the witness of the apostles to that fact. But this feast also invites us to look into the future for it gives purpose and meaning to our lives for what ultimately is the purpose of our human life. So many live without a sense of what is this all about? What is this life truly about? Jesus shows us the way. That life is about union with God, here and for all eternity. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, and the one who lives and believes in me will never truly die. Never truly die. Yes, the body will die, but the person will not die, but rather we are called to an eternal life with the Father. We are called to share God's life forever. And so this Easter gives us a sense of purpose and direction within our lives. But it speaks to the present moment. It speaks to the fact that the risen Christ is among us today. You know, as Catholics, we don't do a lot of Easter pageants looking just to the past. We're rooted in the past. 
but we really celebrate the reality of the present. Christ is present in so many ways within our life, and particularly has touched us in the sacrament of baptism, by which we have become sons and daughters by adoption, sharing in the very life of God himself through the gift of the Holy Spirit, that our baptism radically transforms us, that we are different people. We are renewed through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Or do you not know that those who have been baptized have died with Christ that they may rise with him? We are already experiencing the resurrection of Jesus. The other sacrament of this Easter season is that of the Eucharist, that Eucharist that flowed from the side of Christ, represented in the blood when his heart was pierced. That Eucharist that is at the very heart for the presence of Christ is not sign or symbol, but rather truly the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. It is truly Christ himself in his risen life who is present in every Eucharist that we share, not just on Easter Sunday, but every Eucharist that we share. It is Christ who embraces us with the gift of his life, with the gift of his love. I'm reminded of a class I taught one time years ago with a group of seniors in high school. And there was one young fellow there who was a little rebellious. And I'll never forget, we talked about the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And then he said, you know, Father, Christ died for, he rose, so what? So what? Now, at the time, I was deeply offended. But it's a great question. So what that Jesus died upon the cross for me and for you? So what that Jesus continues his risen presence, that he has touched you and me with that gift of salvation through baptism? So what that Christ wants to share his very self with us in every Eucharist that we share, in which we participate? So what? Does it truly make a difference in our lives? Or is it just a once a year observance? Or just a perfunctory form that we go through? We are called to experience the life of the resurrected Lord right here and now, right at this moment. For the risen Christ is alive. The risen Christ truly loves us and transforms us so that we may be his body today, that we may work for the good of the kingdom, that we may be people of truth and compassion, that we may reach out to the neglected and the forgotten, that we may bring that love of God to those who do not know much love, that we may be concerned for the refugee and for the immigrant, for the sick, the suffering of our world the neglected, those shut away from family. We are called to be the sign of Christ to others. The so what is what difference does it make in my life, in how I live each moment of each day. One of the most beautiful greetings that I know of for Easter Sunday is Christ is risen. And the response of that is, Christ is truly risen. Christ is risen means, yes, historically, in fact, Christ is risen from the dead. But when we say Christ is truly risen, he's risen within my life and within your life. We are truly know, called to know the power and the life of the risen Lord Jesus. Christ is risen. Christ is truly risen.